Today we're going to talk about the 10 best 35mm film cameras you can buy. Now a quick word of note before we get into it. This list could very easily just be populated with Nikons and Leicas, but for the sake of variety I've tried to introduce other marks that are worthy of consideration. Bear in mind that in most cases these are very old cameras and at some point they'll need to be serviced. For this reason I recommend mechanical cameras because in many cases electronic cameras and components are irreparable or at the very least financially impractical. Also note that this list is in no particular order. At number 10 we have the Leica M6 which comes in at approximately £1,100 to around £1,500 excluding a lens. Leica has an enviable reputation in the photography world. Being the pioneer of the 35mm format and being the tool of choice for photojournalists in the early 20th century, Leica transformed photography. With alumni that boast such photographers as Henri Cartier-Bresson, Don McCullin, Robert Kappa and even Stanley Kubrick, choosing a Leica connects you to the roots of street photography like no other. The Leica M6 is the best bang for buck Leica available. It beats the M3 because it has a light meter and more versatile frame lines, allowing you to use a wider variety of lenses. In addition, loading film is easier than on earlier Leicas, as the spool doesn't need to be removed. Also, the rangefinder focusing allows focusing closer than the 1 meter minimum on the M3. Also, with it being a younger model, you're more likely to get one that doesn't need such an urgent service. It has an instantly recognisable shape, and the Leica files amongst you will notice it has an angled rewind crank for quick and easy rewinding of film. As for whether you think a Leica is worth the money or not, well, that's up to you. But there are many reasons for choosing a Leica. Leica lenses are exceptional, they have first class build quality, Leica invented the 35mm film format, they have been used to make some historically significant photographs, and that they are the Rolex of the camera world. In at number 9 we have the Rollei 35 at approximately £120 to around £330. The Rollei 35 is the brainchild of Heinz Vasker, who wanted to create a miniaturised 35mm camera. His original design was rejected by the now defunct Virgin and then by Leica and Kodak. Vasca all but gave up on his dream. Eventually he was employed by Rollei where his new boss Heinrich Piesel spotted the miniature camera and the following year in 1966 the Rollei 35 appeared at Photokina and was incredibly well received. The combination of the Rollei 35's tiny dimensions, funky styling and mechanical precision won the public over and millions of units were sold. There are several sought after models which include the original ones made in Germany, the 35S made in Singapore and a range of special editions. The Sonar and Tessar lenses are reasonably evenly matched but if you're after that extra third of a stop it's best to go for the 35S. It also has a more useful 30.5mm filter thread that is much easier to find accessories for. It's also best to buy one with the light meter on top of the camera rather than the LED models. It needs to be said though that in order to achieve the size some compromises were made which makes for a rather peculiar experience. Firstly, focus is done by estimating distance and zone focusing. The film advance lever is on the left and finally the hot shoe is at the bottom meaning that if you want to do flash photography you need to hold the camera upside down. Regardless, the camera is an absolute gem and even the Queen thinks so. In at number 8 we have the Nikonos V from £190 to £320. If you want your camera to not only be weatherproof but also waterproof then the Nikonos V is the one for you. It was produced between 1984 to 2001 and is primarily designed to be used for scuba diving and other water-based activities. If however like me, you don't tend to go near the ocean, 
this camera is still useful for shooting in the rain, desert environments and events like the colour run. Its distinctive looks and go anywhere ability has given this camera a cult status. Just like the Rollei 35, this is a zone focus camera, but once you get used to focusing this way, the hit rate is quite high and it becomes second to nature. This is Nikon's toughest camera, easily surpassing even the Nikon D5 for durability. To make it an even sweeter deal, it even has auto exposure. In at number 7 we have the Olympus Pen F, from around £65 to around £400. This is actually a half frame camera, but since it takes 35mm film, I'm including it in this list. It was manufactured between 1963 to 1966, meaning that the newest of these cameras is over 50 years old. What makes this camera a marvel is how they managed to squeeze a reflex mirror into such a tiny body. You can also shoot it like a digital camera as a standard 36 roll film will give you 72 exposures. In film land, 72 exposures can last a very long time. And because it's half frame, the pictures have a lo-fi look to them that harks back to a bygone era. At number 6 we have the Pentax MX, from around £80 to around £275. The Pentax MX is a high-end mechanical SLR with a compact form factor. Back in the 1970s and 80s, Pentax was a market leader and their products were solid, reliable and affordable. The MX has a depth of field preview lever and a self-timer, two things that the K1000, its stablemate, didn't have. At such an affordable price, it would be silly not to get one of these. At number 5 we have the Nikon F2, from around £65 to around £3,500. If the Leica M is the Rolex of the camera world, the Nikon F is a Kalashnikov AK47. Utterly dependable, rugged and damn near bulletproof, the Nikon F series forged their reputation in the fires of the Vietnam War. Where other cameras kept jamming and breaking, the Nikon Fs just kept working. With interchangeable backs and viewfinders, this modular marvel is the last F to be fully mechanical, and therefore finding a well-serviced one will be the last camera you'll ever need. If you find yourself in the middle of a zombie apocalypse, and you've absolutely positively got to keep on taking those pictures, accept no substitute. At number 4 we have the Canon New F1 from £175 to around £450. The Canon New F1 is an underappreciated camera. After all, when one thinks about a professional 35mm film camera, Nikon and Leica spring to mind immediately. This makes the Canon New F1 a bit of a hidden gem. This camera was made from 1981 to 1992, but officially discontinued in 1994. What makes this camera great is that it has an advanced exposure meter, aperture priority, shutter priority, and the ability to fire the shutter at all speeds without a battery. Just like the competition, it is a modular camera with all sorts of accessories so you can have it specced just how you like it. And if that wasn't enough to convince you, just take a look at it. In at number 3 we have the Leica MA at £3,499 excluding a lens. If you're in the market for a Leica but buying something second hand is frankly beneath you then the MA may be the one for you. This fully mechanical marvel is simplicity at its finest. You only have the basics, a shutter speed dial, an aperture ring, a focusing tab and that's it. There is no light meter here, but that's just one less thing to go wrong. The appeal of this camera is that it is Leica at its best. The body is made of brass, the film rewind knob is of a more solid construction than the slanted lever of the M6, the viewfinder is less prone to flare, and the film advance lever is a one piece solid piece of metal as opposed to the two piece half plastic affair of the M6. This is also a Leica that doesn't shout about it. There is no red dot and the black chrome one doesn't even get the Leica branding on the top plate, save for a small section on the hot shoe. 
aficionados should be able to tell that it's a Leica just from the shape alone. But this begs the question, why should you get the MA instead of the MP? Well, firstly the black chrome of the MA is more muted and subtle than the black paint of the MP, but that's just personal preference and inconsequential. The real reason is that the ISO dial on the MA is metal, whereas on the MP it's plastic. Plastic? Ugh, how ghastly. At number 2 we have the Pentax K1000 from £50 to £256. The Pentax K1000 was manufactured between 1976 and 1997 and was a recommended camera for photography students due to it being an affordable but all-round amazing camera. Put simply, if you can't take a good picture with this, then you can't take good pictures. Due to its 21-year production cycle, billions of units were sold, resulting in an abundance of cameras in the used market. The sturdy construction, coupled with the best haptics in the business, along with millions of memories associated with the camera, has resulted in one of the most fervent cult followings in all of photography. Pick one up today, you won't be disappointed. At the top of the list we have the Nikon FM2N from £150 to £900. The Nikon FM2N was billed as an enthusiast camera rather than a professional one. However, this is Nikon we're talking about and what that really means is that this is a compact tank rather than the full-on armoured Panzer that is the F-Series. In fact, many professionals carried a Nikon FM2 as a backup in case their main camera, usually a Nikon F3, failed. It was manufactured between 1982 to 2001 and was introduced at a time when electronically controlled cameras were becoming more commonplace. Its predecessor, the FM, was manufactured from 1977 to 1982. Interestingly, the F2 was discontinued and the F3 was introduced in 1980. This was a shift from fully mechanical to electromechanical. Many photographers welcomed the update, but there was a sizable contingent that still wanted a mechanical professional camera. Along came the FM2 in 1982. This boasted a titanium shutter that had a maximum shutter speed of 1 4,000th of a second. That's one stop better than even the F3. Furthermore, it has a flash sync speed of 1 250th of a second, multiple exposure, self-timer, an LED light meter that's much more visible than the one on the F3, and the ability to take a motor drive and bulk film backs. There really wasn't much this camera couldn't do. To top it off, this camera was used by Steve McCurry to photograph the Afghan girl, possibly the world's most famous photograph. And if you think it doesn't get better than that, well it was even used to shoot the minecart scene in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. So there we have it, the 10 best 35mm film cameras money can buy. If you disagree with this list or you think I've missed something out, feel free to write it in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.